اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Please open your Qur'ans to chapter number 65, Surat At-Talaq, verse number 5. And then you will also need from Surat Maryam, chapter number 19, verse number Three, four. Verse number four to verse number fifteen. Surah Maryam, chapter number nineteen of the Holy Quran, verses four to fifteen. <coughs> fifteen, inshallah. For the love of the awaited Savior of humanity, Imam Al Mahdi, Ajjalallahu Taala, Faraj Al Sharif, one loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Surah At-Talaq, verses 4 and 5. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahi rahmanir rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihada. Wa ma kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen. خاتم النبيين سيد الممجد بشير المصدق المصطفى الأمجد محمود الأحمد أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على الظالمين من الأولين والآخرين أما بعد فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واللائي يئسن من المحيذ من النسائكم أن التبتم فعدتهن ثلاثة أشهر واللائي لم يحذن وأولاة الأحمال أجلهن أن يذعن حملهن ومن يتق الله يجعل له من أمره يسرا آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Awaited Savior of Humanity Imam Al-Mahdi عليه السلام My respected teachers, elders, brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh In our discussion yesterday regarding the fourth ayah of Surah At-Talaq, we mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places rights and respect to the pregnant mother and to the child such that both are protected in a way that ensures even in the worst of circumstances such as divorce that the mother-to-be even though she is ex-wife, the mother-to-be, her idda period, is extended to the time in which she gives birth. And that she must still remain within the house so that there is protection for her, care for her, and also that there is no stress or added burden of the stress of her having to leave the house and find somewhere else. In the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأُولَاتُ الْأَحْمَالِ حَمْلَهُنَّ That for the pregnant woman, their prescribed time is that they lay down their burden, meaning that they give birth. We also mention an important hadith from the Holy Prophet Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. 
اللہ مسلم وہی سیز السعید سعید فی بطنی امیہی that happiness, true happiness, is made in the womb, in the stomach of the child's mother. But also, unhappiness is made within the womb of the mother. Meaning what? That the personality, the stresses, the worship that is done by the mother has a direct impact upon the fetus and we know this in terms of many many of the scientific studies that we have until today but the fact that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alih mentioned this 1400 years ago is quite incredible to state that the happiness that comes from the mother will directly impact the nurture of the child or the stress that the mother goes through will ultimately affect the nurture of the child as well. This is an incredible statement from 1400 years ago that really is nothing short of prophetic. But the Quran here is giving us an important point that says that the attention to the care of both mother and child, even at the earliest stage of pregnancy or any start, any point of the pregnancy, is something that Islam takes great concern of, even in the circumstance, God forbid, of a divorce. This raises a question. In terms of the best start that one can provide their children, when does it occur? One may say, it occurs from the point of birth. Here, the ayah suggests that the care for the child and the mother is taking place even when it pregnant during the stage of the womb is that the best and most important time for the upbringing of the child what do you think there is a stage before this even prior to conception the quran provides us with specific examples of the best way to be able to bring a child into this world even prior to conception. This is very important. That the foundation of a child from the Quranic perspective is even prior to conception. And so what I want to be able to do in light of this verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the importance of the care for a child, the preservation of the child, even in divorce, occurs whilst the fetus is in the womb itself, from the perspective of bringing child into this world, there is a sequence of verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the importance of preparation for a child even prior to conception itself. Now it may be that you've already had children long ago, but this can be great advice to anyone who's planning children, or even if you've recently had children, the verses are still applicable that you may apply the meaning of the verse into your own life even until now. What I want to be able to show you tonight inshallah from the Quran is how it provides specific guidance and advice on bringing and preparing children even prior to conception. Please open your Qurans to chapter number 19, Surah Maryam from verse number 4 to verse number 15. The opening sequence of Surat Maryam focuses on the story of Prophet Zakariya and Prophet Yahya alayhim as -salam. Their story is mentioned elsewhere within the Qur'an from a slightly different angle. And so we're not going to take those other verses. We're only going to focus on this set for the story of Zakariya alayhi salam. In short, the story says this. Zakaria alayhi salam and his wife, both of them had lost hope in having a child because of their age. She had gone past the age of being able to bear a child naturally, and he too had gone past the age hoping to be able to bring a child into this world. Why were they so desperate to have a child? The answer is 
because Zakaria alayhi salam did not have a wali, a, an inheritor after him that could supervise the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be a prophet, they could take care of the ummah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he feared that after him, if there was no son, then his family members who were incapable of taking the mantle of prophethood, they would corrupt the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he wanted a son for this purpose, to be able to protect the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have a read of these ayat, and you'll see how this story unfolds in front of you. Verse number four. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قَالَ رَبِّي إِنِّي وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي وَاشْتَعَرَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا وَلَنْ وَلَمْ أَكُنْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّي شَقِيًّا Zakariya alayhi salam said, My Lord, surely my bones have become weak and my head has lost its hair. My Lord, I have never been unsuccessful in prayer with you. So Zakariya alayhi salam is admitting his age and saying, despite this, I still have complete faith that you will be able to provide me with a son. Why does he want a son? Verse number five. وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِي I fear my cousins after me. Why? They will take over the mantle of the leadership of the community, but they will corrupt it. And you know, this happens many times in the history of Islam. The most famous example is that of the Holy Prophet Muhammad in Al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. That he saw in a dream that there were monkeys jumping on his pulpit. Right? What was he told throughout a dream? That it will be Banu Umayyah that steals the leadership after him. Islam will be corrupted by Banu Umayyah. La'anatullahi alayhi majma'een. This is a story that goes back through all of the prophets that they wanted to preserve the faith of Islam. وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِي I fear my cousins after me. وَكَانَتِ مِرْعَةِ aqira, And my wife, she too cannot conceive. Now this is the key verse, key part of the verse that I really want you to focus on throughout tonight's discussion. فَهَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّا Therefore, gift to me from you a wali. Someone who will take over the protection of the deen after me. فَهَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّا Give to me from you an heir. Continue reading inshaAllah. What should he do? يَرِثُنِي وَيَرِثُ مِنْ آلِ يَعْقُوبِ He should inherit from me and the ancestral lineage from the children of Ya'qub alayhi salam. وَجْعَلْهُ رَبِّي رَضِيَّا And I want him, this son of mine, whom you... Allah are well pleased with. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Zakariya alayhi salam in response. Verse number seven. Ya Zakariya, inna nubashiruka bi ghulamin, ismuhu yahya, lam naj'alhu, lam naj'allahu min qablu samiyya. O Zakariya, we give you good news of a boy whose name shall be Yahya. We have not made before him anyone his equal. This is the level of the son we're going to give to you. There's none like him before. Verse number eight. But how is it that we could have a son whilst my wife, she is incapable of conceiving? And I have also reached an extreme old age. How are you going to do this? Verse number nine. This is the decision. This is how it's going to be. It shall be this way. Your Lord says, it is easy for me. And indeed, I created you before when you were nothing. Is it really a problem for me to be able to make something from you when you are already here? My Lord, give me a sign. 
آیتوك الا تكلم الناس ثلاثة ليال سوية Your sign is that you will not be able to speak to people for three nights whilst you will still be in sound health. فخرج على قومه من المحراب فأوحى إليهم أن سبحوا بكرة وعشية. So he went forth to his people from his place of worship. Then he made known to them that they should glorify Allah morning and evening. طيب. Please return back to verse number five. The dua that Zakaria alayhi salam makes. In here, these few words, habili min ladunka waliya is such profound treasure and guidance from the Qur'an that it speaks to how we intend to raise our children and how we actually place before Allah a niyyah for their entire life. Let's first break down the verse one more time. فَهَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ waliya. Habli, from the word wahab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, amongst his divine names, he is al-wahab. Al-wahab is translated as the one who gives. He is a provider, he is the generous giver. This is the meaning of al-wahab. When you ask Allah, you say, ya wahabu. You also say, ya karimu. Ya Jawadu. These are three names of Allah which mean the same thing. He is the generous giver. But what is the difference between the three names in Arabic? Al Jawad denotes a type of generosity that when he gives you, he gives you in the level of what your need is. I need ten thousand dollars, Ya Jawad, he gives you ten thousand. Al Karim is the one who gives you that he gives you so much you will never be in need of asking him again. I need ten thousand, here is fifty thousand. This is the difference. Al Jawad, Al Karim. So depending on what your need is, you will either ask Allah his divine name Al Jawad or Al Karim. Al Wahhab is the one who gives, but it's specifically for spiritual gifts, not material gifts. So when Zakaria alayhi salam asks for a son, the first thing he says is, Habli, give me, but I want the gift to be a spiritual thing from you. Can you see? Habli. Then he goes on and says, From where? Min ladunka from you. Notice the difference. I want a son from whom? From me? No. I want it from you, Allah. Can you see the difference? Now we don't mean it in the sense of like how Christians mean Jesus Christ. He doesn't mean physically. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot provide him. A son from him physically, right? We don't believe that God can manifest himself in that way. What does it mean? If I am given a son from me, Alhamdulillah, inshallah, it comes with all the positive characteristics. What did we say at the beginning of that prophetic hadith? As-sa'idu sa'idun fi batni ummihi. The happiness comes from the womb of the mother, but also the Unhappiness. The trials will also come from the womb of the mother. The stresses will impact the child. So if it is a son from Zakaria alayhi salam, even though he is a prophet, the fact is, is that he is saying, I don't want this son from me. Because with me, Ya Allah, there are so many shortcomings. I'm so weak. I have with me all of these problems and demons and weaknesses in my character and flaws, so I don't want this son from me. It is still from Zakaria. It's still from his loins. It's still from his back, isn't it? But you understand the depth of what's being said. I don't want this son just from me, Ya Allah. I want it from you. You see, with your purity, with your divinity, habli, gift to me, min ladunka, from you, O oh Allah. Waliya, an heir. 
It's four words, but it's incredibly powerful if you understand the dua that is being made. Habli, give to me. Min, from, ladunka, you, Allah, waliya, an heir. This dua is so powerful that if you want to bring a child into this world, you make this dua time and time again prior to conception. Now pair the two verses or parts of the verse. Inni khiftul mawaliya min warai. I fear my cousins after me. I fear that there is not going to be someone who can take care of the deen of Allah sufficiently. Fahabli min ladunka waliya. Therefore, gift to me from you a spiritual gift who will be an heir to me. Place these two parts of the verse together. Zakaria alayhi salam understood the challenges of his time, where the weaknesses could potentially be within his community, and then asked a son to fill the gaps of those weaknesses in the community. You understand? The big problem was what? After me, my cousins are going to steal the mantle of prophethood, the leadership of Islam. They're going to corrupt Islam. It's going to be broken. I can't allow that, Ya Allah. I'm the prophet of Allah. No one is more selfish over the deen of Allah than I am, protective over the deen of Allah than I am, more looking forward to the preservation of the community after I go than I am. So what do I want? You see, I need a child who will preserve this faith after me. The level of issues in the community, I don't want the son to be from me. I want the son to be from you. You see, it's Islam, it's prophetic. So even then, I need someone who has isma. You see, when we say Quran in Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, Quran is the word of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. You can't have something lower than it to explain it. It needs to be equal to it, doesn't it? This is why I leave behind me two precious things. Quran wa itrati tahira. Two things, equal of one another. Same way, when you have the deen of Allah and you have to have a wali that is leading the ummah, it cannot be here has to be equal. Therefore, the son has to be from where? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Habli min ladunka waliya. In here is critical, beautiful, deep levels of understanding for anyone who wants to bring a child into this world. The sunnah of bringing a child into this world is not simply to conceive. A child is not something that is a, uh, you know, it's, it's there to make your Instagram page grow or, you know, it, you live vicariously through your child. Man, I didn't become a successful soccer player, so I'm going to have a successful soccer player, you know? I want to make sure that my child becomes a, a child model and goes on to all the magazines. It's not an accessory. Your child is not an accessory for you. This child has been brought into the world for a purpose. And prophets wanted their children to have prophetic purposes. And by priority, they understood the challenges of their ummah, of their society, and then made dua, Oh Allah, here are the problems within my community. I want a child from you that can actually deal with these challenges. Move the community forward, protect the community from its potential downfall. An incredible hadith from Amir al Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Salawatullah wa Salamuhu alayhi. A'rafun nasi bizzamani lam yata'ajjab min ahdathihi. Whoever knows best the times in which they live in, they will never be defeated by the events therein. If you know the circumstances that you live in, the challenges, 
what's happening in the world, what's happening in your country, the different currents and issues and affairs that are occurring, then when they start to rear their ugly head, you will be the most prepared person to deal with them. It won't catch you by surprise. How many people didn't see Donald Trump coming, his election? They didn't know what was happening in white America. They didn't know that after eight years of President Obama, how much racism was there. They didn't know the way the pendulum was going to swing. What do you think is going to happen in November? Can you see? If you don't know what's happening, if you don't know the culture wars that the left and the right are playing with one another, if you don't know the games that they're playing, if you don't know what Fox News is saying, how can you bring a child into this world? Similarly, if you don't know what's happening in your own communities, if you don't know the challenges that are occurring on the ground, what are the needs of the youth? What are the needs of the madrasa? What are the needs of the pulpit? Then how can we bring a child into this world successfully? Successfully is the point. Can you see? Because things will be happening behind our backs. We won't know what's happening. Right? They're on the phones with the latest, latest gadgets, with the latest apps. We don't even know the names of the apps, let alone what's happening in the world. What does Imam say? The one who knows the time in which he lives in. You will not be surprised by those events. You will not be overcome, defeated by those events. Prophet Zakariya understood that without a son, this cousin of mine is going to destroy the ummah. Therefore, فَهَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّهِ Now, imagine a son from Zakariya alayhi salam. Subhanallah, that son will be incredible, won't it? But imagine when Zakariya alayhi salam sort of withdraws from it and says, the characteristics I want are from you, Allah. Imagine what this son is going to be like. What is his nature going to be like? What is his wisdom going to be like? What does Allah say? Ya Zakariya, verse number 7. Inna nubashiruka bi ghulamin ismuhu Yahya lam naj'al lahu min qablu samiyya. The like of which has not come before him. That's the level of son I'm giving to you. Why? Because it's not from Zakariya alayhi salam. It's from whom? Min ladunka, from you, O Allah. Imagine for a minute if we could teach this understanding to our prospective mothers and fathers. Those who are going to conceive, bring the next 50 children into Anjuman tomorrow, inshallah. Imagine what the next 10, 20, 30, 50 years of this community would be like. If beforehand the parents know, I understand these are the challenges of the time, these are the problems with... LGBTQ, this is the problem with racism, this is the problem in the ummah, this is what's happening in our community, this is where we need... And I want a child who will lead the community in this way. Fix the problem, move the community forward to its next level of accomplishment. What will Allah say? I give you a child, the like of which has not come before. We could bring a whole generation into these communities off the back of this type of niyyah. Prophetic sunnah of how we want our children to be even before conception. And don't think that this only has to happen before conception. Like, you haven't missed the boat. If the pregnancy is occurring, make the niyyah. If the child has already been born, make the niyyah. This is what I want my child to become for you, Allah. Only you can help them become that. I can't. I have so many weaknesses in me. But if you can take them by the hand and lead them, you will nurture them as well to help them achieve the fullest of their potential. Now, please turn to verse number 12, 13, 14, and you'll see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues this point. This is very delicate, very, very deep tafsir of the Qur'an. What did we say was the challenge? Inni khiftul mawaliya min wara'i I fear my cousins 
after me. Now just pay attention to me and think on a practical level, يعني on a, in a very material, worldly level. Zakaria alayhi salam is very old, right? He says, I don't expect to be able to have a child, right? So let's pick an age for the sake of picking an age. What age would he be where he says, I don't think I can have a child? For the sake of argument, let us pick an age, say 60. Would that be fair? Yeah? He says, I fear my cousins after me. So usually cousins are more or less in the same age bracket, up or down 10, 20 years. So let us say his youngest cousin, just for the sake of explaining these verses, one cousin of his is 40, one cousin is 50, one cousin is 60, one cousin is 70. Correct? So now if Zakaria alayhi salam passes away without a son, his cousins are going to take over the mantle of the leadership of the ummah after him. So they are, in my words, the elders of the community, the heads of the tribe at that time. Fair way to explain it? Now all of a sudden, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm giving you a son. His name is Yahya, the like of whom has not come before. So Yahya alayhi salam is a child. How old is Yahya? Let's just pick a number. 8, 10, 15 years old, as an example. Yahya alayhi salam is a prophet. If a young boy stands up in front of the elders of the community and says, I am more worthy of leadership than you. I didn't mean to point at you specifically, huh? It's, it's a bit close, too close to home. If the young man <laughs> stands up and says, I am worthy of leadership, you are not, practically speaking, what will happen? It's already happened. Hmm? It's already happened. <laughs> it's already happened. What will happen? <laughs> kind of thing. The, the, the young boy, 10 years old, 12 years old, 15 years old, what are you talking about? Sit down. <laughs> Who are you? There's no way for you to speak against your elders, is there? Yahya alayhi salam is now faced with this challenge. Zakaria alayhi salam moves on. Yahya alayhi salam now comes up. But the cousins who still wanted the mantle of leadership of the ummah are still present. So now Yahya alayhi salam needs certain qualities. What qualities does he need? The ability to convey his prophetic argument and authority over his own uncles. If it's Zakaria's cousins, it's his uncles, it's his, distant, it's his uh, close family relations. The young boy of 10, 15 years old needs the ability, the power of speech to be able to speak against his uncles. To be able to have the wisdom to speak against his uncles. To have the delil and evidence and hujjah to be able to disprove his uncles. It's not an easy thing. Be honest. How many 15-year-olds could actually speak against the 50-year-old men of their own community? Be honest. Do you understand the scenario? Now look at the verses. Verse number 12. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Ya Yahya. Allah is addressing Yahya alayhi salam. Ya Yahya. خُذِ الْكِتَابَ بِقُوَّةً Take hold of the book with strength, firmness. If I put it in a different way, take hold of the book with seriousness. Have power in the way in which you present the book. وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحُكْمَةً Sabiyya. And as a youth, we gave him wisdom. Now think about this. This is a religious community. So if the cousins of Zakaria alayhi salam are going to have some authority, they need to be able to have some capacity to explain the Torah and the Injil. Can you understand? If a youth stands up against the elder of the community, the elder has got 60 years of studying the book, 60 years of commenting on the book, 60 years of teaching the book. All of a sudden, the young whippersnapper, he gets up and he says, I know the Quran better than you. Okay. How do you have to take hold of the book? 
Khudil Kitaba bi with strength, with power, with seriousness, with authority. Because if you speak mildly and weakly with the Quran without confidence, you're going to get eaten up alive. Not only this, what do you need? If someone's been a leader of the community for 60 years, then what happens? They've got experience, wisdom, track record behind them. Can a 15-year-old stand up? What's he, got, what's he got behind him? Brother, you've just been playing PS2 the whole night. Okay, I've been in the executive meetings for 50 years. I went to Nisimco. I went to WF. I went to the parliament. I went to Congress. I've met the leaders. I know what's happening in the community. What does Allah give this young man? خُذِ الْكِتَابَ بِقُوَّةِ وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحُكْمَ we gave to him wisdom, even though he was still a young boy. Can you see? Where does this come from? Habili min ladunka waliya. Give to me from whom? Allah. You, Allah. The qualities that are needed for this child to be able to tackle the challenges that he has of his, cousin, my, of his uncle's. Zakaria's cousins after him. It's not easy. Put it in the real world. Can you see? Z- uh, Yahya alayhi salam needed proper, real characteristics. Otherwise, he would not be able to overcome his uncles, the elders of the tribe at that time. Verse 12. Read verse 13. What else does Allah give to him? Habli min ladunka. Wa hananan min ladunna. Subhanallah. And we gave him tenderness from us. Why does Yahya alayhi salam need tenderness? Why? If you've got now knowledge of the Quran or knowledge of the Torah or the Injil, powerful words, and you've got wisdom, you also need the balance to be tender hearted with people, not harsh. Because even if you're in the right, but you speak to your elder harshly, you're not going to win any favors. Doesn't matter if you're in the right or the wrong. If your akhlaq is not there, you will not be able to move forward with your argument. So what does Allah give to him? Hananan min ladunna. Tenderness from Allah. Do you know what that means? If you have tenderness according to a mother, mother's level, how much tenderness do you have? A lot. But if you have tenderness from Allah, can you imagine the divine level of compassion and softness in his approach? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the Holy Prophet Rahmatun lil alameen. Can you imagine? These are prophetic characteristics, these are divine characteristics. And purity from us. Can you imagine how pure Yahya alayhi salam was? And he was one who guarded against evil. Verse 14. He was dutiful to his parents and he was not insolent or disobedient. Subhanallah. This is very interesting. Uh, Yahya alayhi salam, when he needed to, he could speak powerfully against his uncles. But how was he with his own parents? Can you see? He never disobeyed them. And he was never insolent. He was completely dutiful to his parents. Even though he had the power to speak and the evidence is at hand, when it came to his own parents, so lowly and humble in front of them. Incredible set of verses, isn't it? Now, the point I make to you is this. Zakaria alayhi salam knew there were challenges in his time, understood the challenges, sought a son, not as an accessory, not something that, you know, it was, it was for him personally. His son was for the sake of Allah, Jalla Jalalahu, for the sake of the ummah, for the sake of the community's needs. To push the community forward. And as such, he said, bring a son to me, gift to me a son. But from you, in response, look at the qualities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave. What were the qualities? 
direct qualities in line with the challenges. You need a son with the capacity to speak against your uncles, to show them who, where is actual prophethood and haq. I give you those qualities. خُذِ الْكِتَابَ بِقُوَّةِ وَآتَيْنَاهُ حُكْمًا صَبِيًّ if you understand that this is the prophetic sunnah, it will change the way we imagine conceiving a child and bringing a child into this world. We would sit for a long time and we would think to ourselves, what are the challenges in our community? What are the challenges in our nation? If I bring a son into this world, what are the challenges that are going to surround him? If I bring a daughter into this world, what are the things that are going to surround her? We live in an era of hyper-sexualization. TikTok, Instagram, all of these different apps. For what? To exploit. To put people at the forefront. To bring out materialism. Everybody has to show the, the images, their holiday of where they went to Dubai, the most expensive food that they've eaten, everybody has to lavish it and put it all up front for everybody else to see. Our children grow up thinking that this is normal. So what happens? I need a child with the qualities to be able to navigate the darknesses of this world, the challenges of this world. And my Lord, if this child comes from me, by God, it will not have the ability to navigate those. You know why? Because look at me, I have failed them. How often have I fallen and sinned and fallen and sinned? My Lord, I'm trying, but I don't want my son or daughter to be as weak as I am. Therefore, I don't want a son and daughter from me. For habili, give one to me. Min, ladunka, from you, Allah. Waliyan, as an heir to me that can carry on my work, my legacy in the community. They can continue on the things that I never got a chance to finish, the things I wanted to start in the community, the things I wanted to change in the community. I'm only one person with 24 hours in the day. But if I could have children after me that can take on that mantle, then the community, inshallah, will be protected by your hand. Not mine, your hand. This is the sunnah, the prophetic sunnah of conceiving a child. That we are supposed to think about these things, understand these things, dedicate what is in ourselves, what is in the womb of the mother to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that the child can move in this way, in this direction in life. And so I say this is a humble recommendation. If there's anyone here tonight wants to have children in the future, take these verses of Surah Maryam, verse number 4 to 15, very, very seriously. Sit down, think about it, talk about it with your wife, your husband. Talk about it with your family. Think deeply about the challenges and where you want your child to be as a leader in those areas, as a wali of yours to be able to lead the community into the next phase of its development. If you've already had children, it is the same. You can still dedicate your child to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those causes. And you can sit with them and say, this is why I want to, you to go in these directions. Let us work together to see what your skill sets are, what the needs of the community are, where you can best serve the ummah of the 12th Imam, sallallahu alayhi and inshallah, we raise a whole generation of children like Prophet Yahya alayhi salam. Walhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salli ya Rabbi ala khiratika min khalqik Muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin. Please raise your hands, join me in dua. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. To allow us to be alongside him at all times in our life and in our death. We ask for Ya Allah, if we are to pass away from this world before his coming, raise us from our graves so that we can partake in the victories of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Ya Allah, help us to understand the prophetic sunnah of bringing children into this world so that we can help our families to become the strongest examples for the Imam of our time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our a'mal and our du'as on the nights of Qadr. 
Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please conclude this discussion with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.